I am going to tell you three stories that sound like they've been made up, however each story is in fact true, and are about three coincidences which happen to different people. The last story is probably the most insane. High school seniors Tyler Smith and Heather Brown went to Volano Beach to celebrate Senior Skip Day 1 April. This is basically a tradition in schools where students in the senior class skip school. The Florida teenagers were excited to spend the day there with some friends, but what started as an ordinary beach day would turn into a life-changing event. It all began when Tyler and Heather spotted an island out in the water, and being competent swimmers, the teens thought it would be a good idea to swim out to investigate. Now, the area of the beach where Tyler and Heather were was completely remote, and so there were no lifeguards, meaning, in hindsight, their plan was definitely not a good one. Nonetheless, at the time, the teens were confident they would be able to make it to the island. And so, with little hesitation, the two jumped into the water, along with some friends, and began to swim towards it. At first, the swim was going okay. But it wouldn't take long before the teens realized the distance to the island was quickly beginning to look further away than they first thought. And by now, Tyler and Heather were the only ones in the group still swimming. But as they continued, they would suddenly get caught up in a current that pulled them out deeper into the ocean. The two tried to cling onto a red buoy as their friends ran to get help, but the current only got stronger and would continue to push them out into the vast waters. And this is when the terrified teens knew they were in deep, deep trouble. Desperation set in, and the two were quickly becoming exhausted with trying to keep afloat. The teens linked arms and tried to float together because they knew if they continued swimming, they would likely go under the water and die. As they floated together and tears filled their eyes, Tyler and Heather both prayed for a miracle, and not long after, something amazing happened. A boat, which seemed to appear out of the blue, spotted them, and the crew would reach out and haul them on board before giving them blankets to warm up, and then returned the teens to shore. It turned out Captain Wagner wasn't even supposed to have been on his boat that day as the waters were very choppy. But what makes this story hard to believe is that the name of Wagner's boat was Amen, and so it seems Tyler and Heather's prayers had indeed been answered. A man named George Pickering was devastated. He had just learned that his dear son had suffered a huge stroke and was now in a coma, and after spending months on life support, the doctors could do no more and planned to take him off life support. The heartbroken father couldn't fathom his son passing and in fact strongly believed he would survive and eventually wake. George was adamant the staff and doctors were moving too fast with their decision, but even with his persistence, the hospital staff ordered a terminal wean to slowly take the 27-year-old off life support, and so George did the only thing he could do, and that was to take a loaded weapon into the hospital and hold the staff hostage until they changed their minds. As George stood by his son's bedside, a SWAT team arrived at the hospital, and there would be a three-hour standoff as the father refused to leave his son, but then something would happen that many found hard to believe. You see, as George pleaded with his son to show some sign that he was still there, around three hours into the standoff with police, his son, who had been declared brain dead, would suddenly squeeze his father's hand, and George, now satisfied, would immediately surrender and was arrested. Although George would be charged and was jailed, he would be released shortly after as his charges were soon dismissed, and the father could finally be reunited with his son, who had thanks to his dad preventing his life support being turned off, would go on to make a complete recovery. It was June in 2001 when a 10-year-old girl named Laura Buxton went to her grandparents' home. They were celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, so held a party at a small farm in Staffordshire in England. Whilst speaking to her grandfather, Laura expressed how she wanted to find a friend, a pen pal, in fact, who she could write back and forth with, and so, Laura's grandfather suggested a very unique way to find one. And together, he and Laura decided to write a note which read, Please return to Laura Buxton followed by her address. Laura then attached the note to one of the helium balloons at the party and let it fly into the air, hoping that it wouldn't just simply get stuck in a tree. But little did she know that what would happen next would be unbelievable.
Two days later and 140 miles away in Milton Lilbourne, a farmer was outside checking on his cattle in a field when he spotted something stuck in his neighbor's hedge. It was a deflated balloon, and upon further inspection, the farmer read the note attached which had the name Laura on it, and it just so happened that his neighbor had a daughter called Laura, and so thinking the balloon belonged to her, the farmer gladly returned the balloon and the note but this would be the start of a series of events that bewildered everyone. It turned out the farmer's neighbor wasn't just called Laura. Her last name was also Buxton. The girl was also 10 years old, but she was an entirely different person to the one who had released the balloon. When she received the balloon from her neighbor, the girl wrote back to Laura. And that's when the two 10-year-olds realized it wasn't just the same name and age they had in common. There was so much more. After some initial confusion, the two Lauras arranged to meet up in person, and they were shocked to see that they had both unintentionally worn matching outfits, which was a pink sweater and jeans. They were the same height, which was unusual, as they were both above average heights for their age. But it didn't stop there. They wore the same hairstyle and had blue eyes. And it would get even weirder when the girls realized they both had three-year-old female black Labrador dogs, and the same gray rabbits and guinea pigs with orange spots on their hind legs. This story was so unbelievable it would soon spread as many found it hard to believe that one balloon, which had blown so many miles away, could end up in the hands of a girl who was almost identical to its owner, and many called it nothing short of a miracle. A professor of mathematics would even state that strange things happen all the time, and we vastly underestimate the chance of coincidences. The two Lauras themselves refused to believe the incident was anything other than fate at work, and they were brought together for a reason. The girls would end up forming a bond and would actually grow up together. They would meet up whenever they could despite being miles apart, and amazingly, 13 years later, the two Lauras are still good friends. This story is still being shared online as many are still baffled about how this could have happened, but nonetheless, although no one truly knows why this happened, the fact is, it did, and what came out of it was a beautiful friendship. So there you have it. Three stories that sound made up but are in fact true, but if you believe in coincidences, maybe they aren't really that hard to believe, whatever the case. Let us know in the comments if you've heard of any of these stories before, and what you think of them. Also, don't forget that if you enjoy stories like these, subscribe to the channel and like this video for more.